Hey everybody, welcome back to another video within the Generative AI series and in this video we'll be talking about the latest updates within the OpenAI assistants in form of file search and vector storage. So up till now whenever you would attach a particular file to your assistant it was it was more like a black box. Obviously there was some kind of vector storage involved, there were some kind of embeddings involved but it was more like a black box. With these updates it gives you more freedom in terms of file search. As the banner says, uh, Neo in the Assistant API retrieval for up to 10,000 files, which is a lot, a lot when compared to the very first version of the Assistant. Token controls, JSON mode, tools choice, and more. So in this video, we'll be building a brand new OpenAI Assistant, uh, which acts as a policy bot for our channel, which is called code cruise so let's get into the code all right so firstly we'll create the assistant so standard stuff uh, yeah before you begin obviously if you're using the previous version of OpenAI don't forget to update it first and then we have a couple of imports over here uh, just loading up our .env file grabbing our OpenAI key and here we have a description for our policy bot so you're a policy bot for the code crews who responds to employees efficiently and effectively with precise response regarding the company policies and employee handbook information. Then we have a couple of instruction. So here it just says that, you know, if, if anything is prompted, which is not aligned with the policies of the code crews, then you just say, I apologize as a bot and I can only guide you regarding the policies and the company specific information. So it's just in order that our bot doesn't deviate to any other sort of conversation. Then we sort of built our assistant through client beta assistant.create. The cruise assistant is the name that we're giving to our bot. We have the description here. We have the instructions over here. We're using GPT-4 Turbo, and this is the new update. Uh, beforehand, it took retrieval as a tool option, but in this particular, with the new updates, you have to give it as file search. And we just print out our assistant over here, and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead into our terminal, and I'm going to run my assistant. File search, create assistant. All right, so that's my assistant ID. I'm just gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it in my .env file. So our assistant is successfully created over here. All right, uh, so I've put my assistant ID within my uh, .env file. Obviously, I'm gonna use that ID over here uh, while running the assistant. So again, I'm in a new file, uh, which is called file search run assistant. So here, I'm just taking the key which happens to be my OpenAI key yet again, and I'm grabbing my assistant ID. So I create my client over here, and the very first thing I would do is create a vector store. And this is like a new feature within the OpenAI, where you create your vector store, uh, you give it some name, and you are provided with the ID of the store, which you would be using in order to run your assistant, which we'll see in a bit. Then what we need to do, we have our file over here, which happens to be work from home policy. And we are sort of providing it within our path. And obviously you can sort of provide more than one files over here. So here it creates the file stream by just opening all the files and to sort of feed it up to the assistant. So here we add our files to the vector store. So we name our variable file batch and we have client, beta, vector stores, file batches, upload and pull. So this is like new. This is like uh, what this method does for us is like it would provide uh, with your vector store ID and the file streams that we have generated over here. You don't actually have to pull it yourself as this method does it. Uh, by itself and it would just uh, resume the flow of the uh, of your code within this file once it's done 
So here, once everything is done, when every file is sort of stored within the uh, vector storage, we just print out the status of our file batch, which should be completed, by the way. Uh, next, we update our assistant with a vector store, uh, which happens to be client beta assistance update. So this is like one of the weird steps that I found within the whole workflow that uh, it should have been here. Like uh, OpenAI should have provided some sort of a way where I can just hook up my uh, vector store directly when I'm creating the assistant. But uh, I'm pretty sure this is in beta. They might update it in the future. So here I provided with my assistant ID and I specify my tools resources. In the previous files, it was tools. In this particular file, while sort of updating our assistants, it's tools resource or resources. So um, I'm gonna say file search and here I'm providing it with my vector storage ID. I just print uh, some normal stuff here, assistants updated with vector store. Next, I'm creating a thread. Uh, if you have watched my previous videos, obviously you will be well accustomed by uh, this workflow. Uh, and we are printing out our thread IDs. Next is the last step, which is definitely gonna help us in sort of wrapping everything up. So this is an infinite loop. I ask, I sort of prompt the user with a with a, with a message like, what's your question? And the user is gonna type it and I'm gonna grab it here. Next, I'm creating a message over here. Uh, again, no biggie. Uh, within the messages.create, we're providing it the thread ID, the role user, and the content in terms of the message entered. Uh, this is probably uh, the most important step where we actually run it. Now, one good update that I felt like it's 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 such a convenience. Uh, before, you had to uh, sort of create a run instance and you had to pull it yourself. So there was no way in which you could know like what's the status of your run instance. But now uh, they have come up with create and pull. So you don't have to do anything. Uh, again, just like you would create a uh, vector store over here and it would upload and pull. And once everything is done, it would resume the workflow. It's the pretty same over here. So you create a run instance, it's gonna make sure everything is run and then it's gonna resume its workflow. Whereas in the previous iteration of the OpenAI assistant, you would have to pull it yourself and you have to check the status that whether it's completed or you know, was it just, you know, uh, was, was the whole process broken due to failed status and you would have to resume again. So that was that was kind of a lot. But this this little addition is uh, works great. Okay, next we grab the messages and we fetch the very top message, which happens to be the response of the assistant and we print the response. So let's go ahead and run it. All right, file search, create assistant. File search run assistant. So here's our vector store ID. File status completed. Assistant updated with the vector store. This is a thread ID. All right, perfect. So let me zoom this a bit. And okay, what's the question? So within the policy, uh, I have a few sections over here. So this says, home office setup, eligibility, reimbursement amount, and this whole policy is called work from home policy. So I'm just gonna check if it can grab uh, this particular detail over here and some other stuff. So what's the reimbursement amount? So this is gonna take its time and run the message on the thread. All right, so we have our answer. The reimbursement amount from, for the uh, home office setup at Cold Cruise is up to USD $800. Woohoo! So this works great. So it has also provided us with the citation and stuff. What is the eligibility criteria for the Home office policy. 
Perfect. So we have our sponsor, the eligibility criteria for the home office setup at Code Cruise stipulates that employee must be permanent, confirmed member of staff. Perfect. So this seems great. So I think uh, OpenAI came up with great improvements within the existing workflow and the addition of file search feature along with the vector storage. Now, let me show that to you guys over here. So, so this is our assistant, the cruise assistant. And as you can see, we have file search enabled over here and we have our vector store over here so we can add multiple vector stores and we can also detach it from the assistant and use it somewhere else so that's kind of a cool feature so within the storage as you can see they have uploaded the files from files to storage you would see all your files listed up over here so for example we uploaded work from home policy txt uh, but it also has an adjacent vector stores attached to it so these are my vector store. So this is the uh, policies and it has work from home policy.txt. So great stuff. Also, uh, just to, I'm just going to scroll here and I'm going to come here, which is how it works section. So you'd find a lot of uh, great details over here. So if you have seen the previous video, so previously we have been using Chroma DB as our vector store. And I also explained, uh, if you haven't seen the video, you can go check it out. It would give you a broader context. And uh, we also talked about cosine similarity and how it's used within the uh, vector storage and vector DBs to sort of fetch out the uh, similar, uh, similar, similar documents, sub documents from a particular query. And we also talked about how it sort of works. You have to provide it. Uh, you have to chunk your documents, especially if you're working with large PDFs. So it talks about a lot of stuff over here. So uh, how file search works, it rewrites user queries to optimize them for search, uh, breaks down complex user queries into multiple uh, searches which can run into parallel, which is kind of awesome. Runs both keyword and semantic search across both assistant and thread vectors and re-ranks the search results to pick the most relevant ones. So this one's uh, kind of great. Uh, when I first sort of checked this feature out, I didn't know that they were using re-rank as well. So re-rank is like an additional step where you would actually fetch the relevant documents and then rank those documents in terms of how related they are to your query. So that's like an additional step. Uh, but this section is pretty much interesting. Uh, so the chunk size for your tokens is 800 tokens and chunk overlap is 400 tokens. So if you have seen my previous video, we ourselves went ahead and we chunked our document. We set up a chunk size and a chunk overlap. So this is how it's working. And for the embedding model, they're using text embeddings three large and the maximum number of chunks added to the context is 20. Could be fewer. And then it, they sort of state some of the limitations and stuff. So yeah, I think it's a great feature. It sort of uh, removes the dependencies uh, from other third-party vector storage if somebody wants to use it. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. And this is it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.